in this video, I'm going to be walking you through assignment 4.2. Now, as I do so, please realize that WAMAP randomizes the question orders and it randomizes numbers for everyone's assignments. So your exact problems might well look different from what you're seeing here. However, the basic ideas behind them and the processes we use in order to actually do them will be the same. All right, so this problem is asking us to simplify it. Now, you'll notice based on the expression given that there are some like terms there. Now, remember when we talk about like terms, we're talking about two terms, and terms are always separated by addition and subtraction. So these are all of our individual terms here. We're looking for like terms, which means ones that have the exact same variables and the exact same exponents on them. And so if I'm going to go through this one, a great way to do it is to just start marking them. So I'm going to start with the first term, which I see has an x squared in it. And for all of them that have an x squared, I'm just going to go ahead and put a box around them. And so I have an x squared there. And as I look down the line, I also see another x squared here. Now you notice that I included the plus that was in front of it. That way I'll be able to keep track of whether it's positive or negative in case that ends up being a subtraction instead. So basically what I have here is I have negative four x squareds plus two x squareds. Well, negative four plus two is negative two. And remember they had to be like terms. That is, they had to both already have the x squared in them. The reason for that is because when we add them together, it's gonna stay the same. A broad rule in mathematics is that anytime two things have to be the same, it's because they're gonna stay the same. So in this case then, when I combine them, I end up getting negative two x squared as the first part of my answer. And then I can go on to the next type of term. So the next term that I see here is C plus five x cubed. And I have another x cubed term down here. And those are the only two. So I can go ahead and combine those. Now there's nothing to guarantee that we'll have two of each of these or anything like that. It just happened that that was the case. It could well have been that I would jump into it and I would find that there is only one x cubed term. And if that was the case, I would just carry it through. I wouldn't have to change it at all. But since I can combine it with something else, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do 5x cubed plus 6x cubed. And the 5 plus the 6 gives me 11. And remember, they both had to be x cubed because my answer will also be in terms of x cubed. Since it's a positive 11, I'm going to write plus 11x cubed here in my answer. And then we look at our next type of term. And we just keep doing this until we get down all the way to the end. I'm going to go ahead and circle these. Uh, no particular reason, just trying to use a different symbol. And so in this case, I have negative 5 plus 7. Okay, well, all I got to do is do what is negative 5 plus 7. And negative 5 plus 7 is a positive 2, so I will then write plus 2. Once I've done that, I have now simplified it because there's nothing else I can do here. I cannot combine any other like terms here because there are no other like terms. I have an x squared. I have an x cubed, and I have a number without an x, which means that's as good as it gets. Now, technically, if we want to get extra fancy, we could try to always write the biggest exponent term first. Uh, if you want to start digging into that sort of thing, then you might prefer to write it as 11x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2. But you do not have to on this problem. And if you don't worry, want to worry about that right now, you don't need to. Once you have typed this answer into your box, or this answer, either one would be fine, then go ahead and click the Submit button right here. And then it should tell you, if you've done everything correctly, that you got one out of one on that problem. If it tells you anything less than one out of one, like zero out of one or 0.5 out of one or anything like that, go back, redo the problem, and keep doing it, fix it until it is correct. Because our goal with these is to get every single problem 100% correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at another one of these problems just to make sure we got the hang of it. In this case, we're gonna be simplifying this expression. And in this case, it's a lot shorter, which is kind of nice. It means it's gonna be a little bit less work for us, but our basic process is the same. 
I'm going to start by noting that I have a 5x to the 8th here. So my term type is that it's x to the 8th. I put a box around that. I'm not going to put a box around anything else that is also x to the 8th. And there isn't anything. And so that 5x to the 8th is just going to stay a 5x to the power of 8 in my answer. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and put a circle around my next term just so that they look a little different, trying to use different markings. And so then if I then circle the term after that, because it is also x cubed, then I can see, OK, I can go ahead and combine those x cubed terms. In this case, I have a positive 9x cubed minus 2x cubed. So I'm basically doing 9 minus 2, which is 7. Now notice it is a positive 7, so I'm going to write that as plus 7. And then the x cubed that was in it, it has to stay with it. Since I have now dealt with all of the different parts of the original expression and combined what I could, I am now done and could click Submit on this one. Next problem. Uh, my first term in this case has an x squared in it, so I'm going to put a box around anything that I see with an x squared. It looks like that's actually the only one with an x squared, though. And so that one is just going to stay exactly as it was. So that's going to be a minus 9x squared at the front of this. So we start with negative 9x squared. Next up, my next term type has an x to the ninth in it. So I'm going to circle anything else that has an x to the ninth in it, which just happens to be everything else, three of them. And so in this case, that means I have negative 9x to the ninth plus 2x to the ninth minus 5x to the ninth. Now, when I put all those together, I know it's going to be something x to the ninth. In order to get that something, we're just going to do negative 9 plus 2 minus 5. So negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. Negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. And so then that's what's going to be going over here in my answer box. We're going to write it minus 12x to the ninth. And for the final problem in my particular assignment, again, yours will look different. But in my final problem, I'm looking at this one. So again, I'm going to go through the process and I'm going to mark up the different pieces to look for those com those like terms that I can combine. And so I have negative 6x to the 7th. So I want to go ahead and mark anything else that is x to the 7th. So I've got an x to the 7th there, an x to the 7th there. Looks like that is it. Notice I happen to choose circles to start with this time. There's no magical reason, just what I felt like doing. So we're going to do negative 6 plus 4, which is negative 2. Minus 2 is negative 4. So that gives me negative 4x to the 7th. Next up, I'm going to go to the x to the 6th term. So I have x to the 6th here, and I have x to the 6th here. I'm going to go ahead and combine those. So I have a positive 8 plus 3. That gives me a positive 11. So that will be 11x to the 6th. And then finally, I have an x to the 8th over there. Notice there's nothing else that I can combine it with, so that's just going to stay plus x to the power of 8. And then that would be my final answer for this one, and we'd be done.